the situation in Afghanistan is precarious. It had never improved, at least during the past four decades. But uh, with the advent of the Taliban, you have to give them some credit in a sense that by and large, the country is peaceful. Uh, this was not the case uh, when Ashraf Ghani was ruling or before that uh, President Hamid Karzai was in power. And uh, this all had happened, I mean, the unrest in Afghanistan continued during the past two decades, especially ever since the American troops landed in Afghanistan. They did try to have some uh, in national reconstruction. They brought in uh, quote-unquote democracy in Afghanistan. They brought in a constitution which is cut and paste of the American constitution. The, the kind of uh, presidential elections are held are in fact a replica of what you see in the United States. But at the same time, they have brought in a parliament which was uh, on non-party basis. Now, this is a paradox that you are selecting, a, uh, you are electing a president on adult franchise. You are electing a Wolasi Jirga or lower house of the parliament on adult franchise, but on non-party basis. So this did not give political stability or did, did not contribute to the process, political process in Afghanistan. So the result was that on political plane, they could not create cohesion in the country, which could have contributed to the socio-economic justice and that's how the gap was filled in by the Taliban, especially in the countryside. And now, uh, after the withdrawal of the American troops, now it's more than a year and a half, Taliban have consolidated their position, there's no doubt. But at the same time, they are also under threat from ISK, uh, Islamic State of Khorasan. Uh, but uh, at the same time, there's a cause for worry for the regional countries especially, that. Uh, ETIM uh, charters from uh, Xinjiang province are uh, taking shelter in Afghanistan. Uh, Islamic movement of Uzbekistan, IMU, their people are in Afghanistan. And from our point of view, TTP, they are taking shelter in Afghanistan. Now, from Pakistan's perspective, you look at it. We have a symbiotic relationship with Afghanistan. It is just not the Taliban that uh, we are being accused that we supported them. That's not the case. It was actually, whosoever was an organized uh, entity inside Afghanistan, and you, the, 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 I mean, the, the empirical evidence for that is that uh, Ashraf Ghani government fizzled out uh, in, a, in no time. And uh, Taliban entered uh, Afghanistan without firing uh, Kabul, without firing a single shot. What did it show? It sh uh, showed that uh, Afghanistan never had a political process to which people could have owed allegiance to. They were not the stakeholders. So the result was the Taliban being an organized uh, entity, they captured the power in the country. And they captured not uh, with, uh, with some um, uh, bad dealing or some under the table, they negotiated with the Americans. Now we like it or not, they are under the 1267 committee sanctions. Still more than 100 Taliban are uh, on the list. They cannot travel, they are to be arrested, they are to be tried. On whatever charges you may level, they are to be tried. But they are a reality, <clears throat> and Americans recognize this reality, which is why that they negotiated for 10 years with the Taliban. They entered into agreement in 2020 in Doha. They shook hands, they withdrew, because Americans wanted to withdraw. NATO countries wanted to withdraw, because the, this mantra of terrorism, in fact, had started giving diminishing returns. Not anymore. India has tried to, you know, uh, repeat this mantra of so, of so many times, but of, uh, recently uh, External Affairs Minister Jay Shankar had to complain in Vienna that people are not listening to us, to quote-unquote epicenter of terrorism. The question is, this is not terrorism. 
these are the things that Americans entered there. They did dislodge Taliban. This was the reason was 9-11. They wanted to punish someone, they punished Afghanistan. And subsequently, they wanted to punish Iraq, they punished Iraq. They went there without the sanctions of the UN Security Council. If Afghanistan was the war of, uh, uh, you can say, necessity, so they opted for the war of choice at Iraq. And they ruined that country. And without finding any weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. So you have to see it from that milieu. So now Taliban are there. And now they are a headache for the region, for the immediate neighbors of Afghanistan. And this uh, should be made clear to everyone. They don't play favorites inside Afghanistan. And this is the lesson which I think uh, immediate neighbors have learned, which is why they have not recognized the Taliban regime till the time they are satisfied that Taliban are behaving in a manner that they are part of the, part of the region and they qualify to be part of the international community. And this is a big challenge for the Taliban because they have to show performance. They have to show for performance, especially on the human rights plane and where especially on women's uh, rights, uh, their right to education, their right to work, which is uh, right now denied. There's a saying, there are comments that perhaps Taliban want to uh, bargain on women's rights. Uh, I don't think that this is an issue where the world is going to bargain with the, with the Taliban. Forget about that. Even in Pakistan, we would not want to have Taliban way of life in, in this country. Overwhelming majority would not support it. Uh, even TTP has seen it in uh, Swat and uh, Malakan. There was a rebellion against uh, the appearance of the TTP guys, which forced the uh, law enforcement agencies and the authorities to go against them while they were holding dialogue with them. So the dialogue's failure is actually, there's the overwhelming uh, view in the country against the TTP. You have to put them to account. Don't forget what happened at APS Peshawar, where the innocent children were massacred ruthlessly. Taliban, Afghan Taliban will have to realize that if they still give shelter to the TTP, this is not going to serve the cause of peace between Pakistan and Afghanistan and the region, one. Secondly, the TTP will have to face the rule of law. They just cannot be allowed here and with their weapons, not at all. I think the overwhelming uh, view in the country is uh, that if they have to come to Pakistan, they have to face the law. They have to face because you cannot just uh, leave uh, or forget about what happened at the APS or elsewhere. The kind of uh, uh, terror they, in fact, uh, resorted to in the country. So this is very important. Now, if you talk about the future projection of uh, Pakistan-Taliban uh, relationship, I think uh, uh, there's a need to have a serious dialogue. And I think there's also a need that uh, these dialogues should uh, be conducted uh, in a discreet manner without uh, uh, public glare, uh, without going to the, the media, uh, because that generates a different kind of uh, uh, speculations and uh, it, in fact, muddies the atmosphere. So it's uh, better that those dialogues should be held discreetly. More importantly, Afghanistan has to sustain itself economically. If uh, Afghan economy is already in dire strait and if it uh, deteriorates further, its direct impact would be to immediate neighbors of Afghanistan, especially Pakistan, because if uh, the poverty graph increases in the country, which is already 90%, so people would be forced to migrate. And uh, because of uh, the kind of uh, relationship Pakistan and Afghanistan have, and because of the divided tribe both countries have, so they will have migrate to Pakistan. Already, since the withdrawal of the American troops, close to 400,000 Afghan, Afghans have entered Pakistan. They are actually, uh, the bulk of them, they want to migrate to the United States or European countries. 
they are waiting for the, the proce uh, processes to be completed to migrate to those countries. So it is important that uh, finally I would uh, recommend that or I would suggest that uh, there should be a dialogue at the wider scale, not only in the region, immediate neighbors of Afghanistan, but internationally also. That in any case, Taliban are a reality, they are a de facto power. So you have to accord de facto status to them, which already the world has given. But at the same time, allow them so much uh, space that at least they can do normal businesses. Because if they cannot do normal businesses, then they'll resort to illegal businesses. They have already banned uh, cultivation of opium. They can resort to opium uh, cultivation again. So it would be a harm to the world. So, and allow their banks to work uh, normally. Right now they are under sanctions. And unfreeze the $9.6 billion which Americans have frozen uh, after their withdrawal. So this kind of avenges actually is uh, harming the general uh, public in Afghanistan. Uh, it will not harm the Taliban. They are very much there. Uh, they can uh, go on uh, uh, for more, many years. And if they are dislodged from power, they will fight again. So it's better to have a dialogue with them, like Americans did the dialogue for a decade and then uh, signed the Doha Agreement. So it's better that uh, we repent later on. It's better that we should, in fact, engage them in dialogue and see how uh, and uh, what kind of uh, concessions both sides can make.